All right, guys, good old boy 32 here checking out. So we're sitting out here in the Freedom Shack, and uh, well, we are going through our cheap versus expensive. And I just I think it's more or less not along the lines of cheap versus expensive, but economy versus full blown, you know, unlimited kind of thing to a point. <laughs> so uh, what have we done so far? Well, we have built this guy and this guy. Okay, so these are two different uppers right now with the barrels, the muzzle brake, gas block, gas tube, hand guard. And one of the things that we haven't talked about are the receivers and the differences in between the receivers when we got a full blown versus the economy. So that's going to be the upcoming video. So one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video is I just wanted to give you guys a prequel to what we've actually got coming up. And I wrote those down. So anyway, we're going to talk about upper receivers. We're going to talk about forge versus billet. We're going to talk about charging handles. We're also going to talk about bolt carrier groups. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get into the subject line of, well, lower, lower receivers. Uh, we're going to talk about billet. We're going to talk about against forge. We're going to talk about one of the coolest parts there is, the Air Precision M4E1, which is absolutely unbelievable. But as part of that lower, we're going to talk about parts, kits, grips, buffer tubes, and springs, and stocks. Because uh, as a part of the economical build, we're going to go with just a regular old mil spec buffer spring and buffer and tube. But... <laughs> Picked up one of these. I actually, uh, I preach what I t speak. I got two of these over there at Primary Arms for $29 a piece. So we'll go ahead and talk about that. And we're also going to speak on stuff like this carbon fiber, as well as one of my absolute favorites, which is the Double Star Skeletonized Stock. And I love these because they've won. They've been around for a long time. They're very well proven. And I get just one of the most constant cheek wells as well as it's got this neoprene cover. You follow my channel, you know that I'm a big fan of these guys right here. What else we got? <clears throat> Ta -da. Then we're gonna talk about triggers, different type of triggers. I have the new uh, Palmetto State Armory uh, drop-in single stage three and a half pound match grade trigger. And we're gonna be doing a full blown review on this guy down the road, but we're gonna also put this in the Econ build, Eco One, as my good friend BJ says, because this guy right here is $119 free shipping. Um, trigger test. And then what I wanna do is a range test. And that is going to be established by you guys, the viewers, within reason. I know to some people, but in any case, I thought it'd be really cool if we could go ahead and start establishing some of the things that you want to see, like split times. You want to see separation of a five ground group at 10 yards with a rapid fire as fast as we can, because those are going to be the things that you look at when you're talking about a competition gun. Uh, double taps on targets. We're going to be talking about that. Resets and the triggers. We're going to talk about accuracy. Uh, a longevity. Well, that's one of the other things that we're going to probably have to talk to about down the road because, well... Longevity, that costs money. <laughs> anyway, and bullets and time. But in any case, this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and at the end of the day, we're going to have a really cool rifle build. Both can be used in competition. And I think it's going to come down more or less to the shooter. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about these upper receivers here and the difference between billet uh, forged and then like the air precision because I'm a big fan of the air precision stuff because it's about as close to a billet as you can possibly get. Let's go. Here we go. All right. So we're sitting back over here looking at upper receivers and guys, I really don't know that there's a whole lot of information and I can give to you about an upper receiver other than one of the things that I do like is the M4E1 from air precision because this gives you one of the best looking platforms that you can get, especially in comparison to say something like this. This is a Rainier Arms and this is a billet upper receiver. And this is one of the reasons why I've, I've had this for a while. And one of the reasons why I can actually afford to do this is I bought this a long time ago. But if you can look at what we've got here in, as, as it relates to uh, billet, 
versus a forge but for about 60 right now i think these things are on sale if you can find them for about 59 69 dollars which is a really good deal uh one of the other things that i would suggest and i've always done this is just if you got something really nice go ahead and replace that mil spec dust cover with a um this uh, strike industries dust cover i absolutely love these things now a lot of people will argue about having a ford assist on your uppers i guys i've always had ford assist if you're a military guy you've always had a ford assist so why not continue that trend in your competition upper now this is a probably an anderson or even a maybe in a uh era precision i'm not sure but is the, is is a billet receiver or one of these receivers going to perform better than this one most likely not. The biggest difference is, and one of the things you want to confirm, is the interior. I've actually seen, well, basically, let's do this. I'm going to take a buffer. Now, what do they call these things? A bulk carry group. Now, this is the one we're going to be using, and we're going to talk about that in a separate video because of the rhyme and the reason, because as a whole, we want this thing to operate. But as you can see, this particular upper it just it it's horrible it sounds bad and this one well come on now get back out there it does too not sure why it sounds like that but if we go to this guy right here that's reduced let's go ahead and try this new bolt carrier group from cmc these things are really cool not bad there and the Aero Precision Upper, you still have just a, what appears sounds to me like a damn cheese grater. I can't stand that. Let's see if it makes any more difference. We're having fun now. Okay, so this is a Sharps Rifle Company. This thing has got that uh, diamond-like coating on it. Let's see what if it sounds like in this guy. Yeah, there's no change. So when people say it sounds like a cheese grater in there, well, you know what's going to happen over time? That'll smooth out. That sounds a lot better. That sounds a lot better. Now, we're going to be doing a review here in a bit. This is the uh, Rubber City Armory. This is a, a titanium nickel finish, and it still has that nastiness on there. Well, anyway, guys, that's it. Cheap versus expensive. I don't know that I could tell you anything that would... Is one better than the other? Probably not. Where it does get a little better is the fact that you can uh, have a more of a match. Say, for instance, this is the lower that's going to go on the, our budget build. Those two look pretty good. It's an Anderson. The finish is a little bit different. But let me show you this. This is an Aero Precision lower. And these are matched up perfectly, as you can see. So there is some aesthetics involved. And the nice thing is, is from this point of view, it does not look like a standard cheapo upper receiver. And it looks more like this guy right here, the Rainier Arms. So anyway, uh, fit and finish, maybe a little better. Performance? Eh, I don't think so. It's Coda Boy 32. If you got anything to add in the positive nature, please don't hesitate in adding in the comment section down below down there but we'll end it like this god bless america god bless his men women in uniform 24 7 for our freedom it's freedom well sometimes you just got to prove the point in the field of competition in the course of fire that you can actually roll with the big dogs let's go to boy 32 i'm out